simultaneously. Simultaneously. <laughs> he's he's just a medal hunter, isn't he? Absolutely. But again, you know, it gives him the freedom of movement of that upper body to be able to carry things. Yes, and as, especially in the in the parcel toss, you see the the benefits of having your hands free while walking. I and love the team Kyle started. The big cheers as well there. There's such an atmosphere at Team Kaist in South Korea. Yes. And you can see the speed of this device, it's incredible. So here, he is going to tackle the first task, and we've yes. seen this every time in qualifying from him. Why is the sideways step so difficult? So it's so difficult because it, um, it uses additional muscle groups. Uh, so you have to have these additional degrees of freedom in the hip, but also in the uh, ankle of the foot, which makes designing the exoskeletons really challenging. And you can see that he was able to get the parcel and... Okay, this is the... Yes. Oh! Oh, that was close. Rolf, every time you do that, my heart just goes up a notch. Is the parcel going to drop on the floor or not? Because if it did, it would be task <laughs> fell, but no. The throw uh... motion is good. The wave to the crowd. This man's a rock star. <laughs> like you said earlier in the interview, you know, it's kind of... You know, this isn't so much pressure for him uh, because he is moving a little bit slower, yeah. obviously, than in the wheelchair in that so race. You're, you're, so he can wave to the crowd. You think he artificially uh, get the thrills by throwing the package. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. we see Team Kai successfully sitting down and standing up again. And you can imagine that this task is really, I mean, so often you, you are in places where you have to sit down and then stand up again, right? Even in public transport, if you want to enter a train and so on. Of course. So if you're able to do that with the exoskeleton, that's really, really great. And so we are moving on and passing what would have been the stairs, yes. which they, they have not even constructed there because they weren't going yes, to exactly. do that task. Now, actually, a lot of the teams are able to do the stairs, potentially but they couldn't uh, prepare good enough for the, for the competition. So I expect in a few years to also see this task um, well succeeded. Uh, I think uh, for Team Rise here and Jessica Devadu Mela, they may have called it a day. I think so too, they're carrying her in the wheelchair. Oh, that is a real shame. Okay, back to Team Kites now. And if you haven't joined us before now and you're coming in for the final, we're seeing a little bit of a, a, a different design in all of the exos, but here there's a lot of weight, or it looks like a lot, but there's a frontal structure rather than something at the back. Here. Yes, and this is really unique, so that's the first time that we, that we see this at the competition. And I... imagine he's only using the crutches now to be even faster. Now, there, you know, he's coming up to a, a point where there is going to be free walking, which is something w which was remarkable to see mm -hmm. with that EXO a little bit earlier on. We're back then in Thailand now in our remote hub. This is a very tricky uh, task. It's called crowd uh, for a reason, because you have these red uh, robots moving around the table and you have to make sure that you don't touch them and don't interfere with them in any way. Even with the crutches, you're not allowed to touch. And I think, yeah, that there's the red flag already up. And we see free moving, not a problem if you have integrated crutches. And he's just completed that as Keister just starting it. So let's take a Here look at them. Keist. Wow. Completely free moving without the use of crutches, Mike. And still with a very high speed. I'm so surprised. And such good balance and yeah. control here. And it's a task pass. Nice, well done. So that's 30 points on the board then for Team Keist. And I think Team Warilek calls it a day here as well. Or are they trying this, uh, the door as well? Oh, they're bringing the wheels. They are bringing the wheels. We can see them just behind. Okay, let's get back to Team Keist in this crowd scenario now. It, it, oh, you you see, know, there's actually really not a lot of, uh, of space between these, uh, these robots. There isn't, and as you mentioned, you know, there's four devices going on here because there's legs and crutches. Yeah. And you know, it's with these exoskeletons, you can't just 
on the fly adapt your uh, your stride length and your walking patterns. Um, this is really really challenging. Okay, we pass that task. And he, oh, nice. See how he gets back to the wheelchair mode. It is intriguing to see this technology is just incredible what we're seeing here now. And just in a few years' time, what we'll see again uh, as it rapidly, rapidly gets better and better. But what, what I've seen this weekend has totally blown my mind. And what's also interesting are the different strategies on how they approach the task. Because here you, yes, we see now that he will pass the door sideways. Is that because his exo is a little bit bigger then, the feet a little bit wider maybe? Or it's um, just a strategy that he thinks will be quicker? I think it's quicker and easier for him because elsewise he has to think of, of where to put the crutches. Now at Chiang Mai then over in Thailand we are seeing 10 points on the board here. They've successfully got the door open and are through. And Kaist have already closed perfect. the door. And maybe we get a glimpse at the awesome strategy of uh, the other team on how to close the door. Yeah, they had a great strategy, yeah. our, our Thai team. So Real Shock has finished. Let's just go and see if they e implement the strategy. It might sound basic, but they yes, it's very difficult to rotate, obviously, when you're in an EXO. So he's just using the hinge of the door, putting his hand into the hinge to... And it's just enough to give the door this push uh, to then be able to grab the handle and close it completely. Yeah, they've done well there. That was, that was well thought out, because obviously turning around would take time. Yes but he can rotate a little bit of the, at least stretch his arms around to be able to do that. And what we've seen in the 2020 competition is that if teams have to turn, they usually, uh, they do it by lifting themselves up with the crutches. So you need a lot of upper, uh, upper limb strength to then move around and turn. So it's okay. much easier if you can find alternative strategies to close it. Let's wait and see if we, get, we got, need to wait for the green flag to be held aloft. Oh, and this is also awesome. This I is think our we final just, task I think we here. just missed it, but he had to grab this um, um, this, this container out of the uh, drawer that is very close to the, to the floor, which doing um, in an exoskeleton is really, really hard. Really difficult. We did see it earlier in qualifying, didn't we? Him being able to lower himself to a degree to be able to to get the item out of the draw. Uh, back in Thailand then, they had the green flag, so they're on 20 nice. points. Oh, but he's, he's put so much effort into that. Well done. And you see how physically demanding it is for, oh. for him. It's I'm really and you know, the movement seems so flawless. It does. You can really see that there's years now of experience for, for Team Kais. And Team Kais wow, then taking points. the most points. And it was in no doubt, as Michael said, the team have been working together for years in development. Yes. And that is evident. That is so amazing. With this technology. Well done. Well done. Yes, good. It was such a team performance and you can see how well this team has gelled together and you can see how much you have developed this technology with one another. Please tell us a little bit about this, this whole movement and this whole experience and how it can move without crutches and, and be such a, a dominant system here. Oh, I'm a lot of people. 친구들과 함께해서 잘 해낼 수 있었던 것 같습니다. Although you look, it was really fluent, but he was actually really nervous. But he said, because we are team, we have many team members, he can do it well. He have done it well, yeah. And another round of applause here for you all from the arena in Switzerland. Uh, how long have you been working together and developing this system? Um, we have worked two years, and this pilot not only just trained, but also he have designed this robot together. Yeah. And you From can the two really years, understand that collaboration. Last six years, we did a lot of training. 
Just an incredible performance. Um, really, very well done to you and the whole team. Um, from all of us in Zurich, out to Korea, well done. You are the winners of the Exoskeleton. Thank you. Right, we are going to take a very quick break. When we come back, it will be medal ceremony time. See you in a moment. It will be. And the winners of the 2024 Cybathlon Exoskeleton Race, all the way from Korea, please give it up for Team Keist. And with an impressive 60 points, Gold medal for pilot Song Wang Kim. Oh, fantastic scenes here from South Korea. What a victory for Team Kais. Maybe some little people not quite so happy as the others, though, there. What a team. for the winners in the medalists in this 2024 Cybathlon Exoskeleton race. And there we go, our final podium ceremony here at Cybathlon 2024. Well-deserved victory for Team Keist in South Korea. And we celebrate, of course, the exoskeleton podium, the results on your screen there. What a way to round it all off here then, and what has been a truly unique event.